Hello and welcome to a new video about augmented reality. This time we're going to extend a little bit our windmill. We want to spin also the fan, the rotor, as I, as I learned, called sails. However, we keep calling it fan, just for continuity reasons. So we want to let them spin. This is our project. Our project, Muforia Studio, yeah. we will open our project and the first thing we again see is our dice here. Huh? Dice is still here. Here we have, we can change. Here's the windmill. These are all the views. So with a click to the windmill, we'll change to the windmill. This is our windmill from last time. Okay. This is our 2D part with the slider to rotate the top. Now we, now we only want to rotate this black part, huh? the fan, the sails. This is one assembly. How can I select only this part? Huh? How can this be done? Well, there is a widget called model item, yeah, model element. Huh? You have it here on the left hand side and you can drag it. And now it's getting a little bit tricky because there is no highlight. This would be nice if there would be a highlight, but it is not. So we will try to drop it at the model element we want to select. Book. Ah, hit it. Okay. So I hit the model element. You see, now under the model moving, there's a model element. Yeah? I will also change the studio ID. I will call it model model element yeah, or model item model item uh, uh, rotor we'll call it rotor okay model item rotor this is the model item rotor now we if we change the rotation in set orientation you see the, the, the blue line is set you can see it down here yeah there is set yeah. If we change the set orientation, the set rotation, we should see something. Ah, yeah. Okay. So this is rotating. Huh? Of, of course. I mean, what I could do, yeah, what I could do is switch to 2D, add a new slider, huh? back now to the bottom, change the value from 0 to 360, one step, 180, do exactly the same as before, yeah? do exactly the same as before, and bind the value to the model model item, rotor, yeah? to set spinning, bind. Yeah? If I now press preview, I should have two sliders, yeah? one for the top, let's see if finally managed to open it, uh, is somewhere a preview? No. Preview. Preview, please. Yeah. One, which is rotate. This is what we had last time. And now with this, I can rotate the plates. Okay. I mean, yeah, it would be nice to simply press a button, say, hey, now the wind is blowing and this shell rotate and rotate and rotate and rotate and rotate and rotate and rotate. You understand, yeah? <laughs> so, yeah, I will simply remove this. Ah, it's removing something is always at the top here. Remove, clear. So, actually, what we can do, eh? A good idea is always to use so-called application parameters. Yeah? You can add a new field or there are new area yeah, by pressing those buttons. Yeah? You can put them in the scope, the view, yeah? or exclude it from the view. If you have a small screen, it's useful for you. Yeah? And there are the so-called application parameters, Anwendungsparameter. Yeah, there are some already given. Okay. 
we are going to use now a new application parameter. We want to use an application parameter for the rotation. Okay? And I will call the application parameter AP for application parameter and I will call it angle for the rotation angle. Huh? Add. So I have now an application parameter for the angle and I also want to have an application parameter for uh, the wind, how, how fast, for the speed, yeah, wind, wind factor, something like this. Yeah? So I add a new application parameter called app wind, wind speed, well, call it so, wind, yeah? that's it. Yeah? So here, if I enter 2, yeah, the wind should be 2. If I enter 3, the wind should be 3. If I enter 10, the wind should be 10. Yeah? The faster, the, the higher the number I want to enter, I have to enter, the faster it shall spin. Yeah? It shall start with 0 degree. Oh, this is, this is something. Okay, so how do we manage? Yeah? We want to manipulate now this angle. Yeah? If I move this angle, I can bind this angle again to the motor item, to the model item rotor. Yeah? I will select set rotation bind. Yeah? Now this angle is bound to the set rotation of the motor. If I now change the application parameter AP angle, uh, the rotor will move to its new position. So what I have to do is I have to change this. There is a possibility in Vuforia Studio to code with JavaScript, JavaScript, uh, Java, German, JavaScript. Uh, English pronunciation. The according JavaScript which is executed can be found here. It's called windmill.js JavaScript. If we open it, we see right now it's not there's nothing inside. There's no special code inside. New functions and so on, they have to be entered into, into scope. Let's see if I can if I can zoom in here now. Yeah, for us that it's easier for you to read. So I will now add a new function. A new function is called dollar scope dot and now I can select a name and I will select uh, and select the name spin rotor. This function shall move the rotor to the new position. Okay? And in JavaScript, I have to call it equals, and this shall be a function. Huh? And here is the function body. This is how this should look like. Currently, it's a defined function. It's doing nada, nothing. Okay. What I have to do, okay? So, dollar scope. Dollar scope is always so some sort of the root, yeah? like if you write, if you, it's a C double point backslash, yeah? the root of your data structure, of this JavaScript data structure. And somewhere in these data structures, there are also our application parameters. And these application parameters you can find under dollar scope dot app dot params. And now we have to no, I should have remembered what I called this application parameter. Let's take a watch. AP angle. AP angle. Mm -hmm. This. Yeah, there's error inside. Of course, there's an error inside because I'm not ready coding. Angle. AP angle. Mm -hmm. And this shall be yeah, exactly the same. And now I will enter the wind. Dollar scope dollar dot app dot params dot ap wind. Yeah. So the new angle is the old angle plus the wind or minus the wind to rotate it in the right direction. Yeah. Good. And of course, we don't want to let this angle parameter grow into infinity. 
yeah, we want to keep it between 0 and 360 degree. So what we can do is simply to manipulate this yeah, and press Modulo Operations 360. This will keep, it's building the, the remainder of a division. I divide by 360 and the remainder is something. Yeah, if it's above 360, it's again 0 or 1. Yeah. So this line will keep my angle between 0 and 360. This function spins now the rotor. I can add a timer. Yeah. I can add a timer with a certain ID and I can tell my JavaScript, please call this function every whatever seconds. Okay? So we'll now add a timer handling function. Scope. timer func spin uh, equals function shall be a function and it should look like that. Uh, if the only thing I have to do here uh, is to apply this function. I, I need to call apply because I want to update the, the model. Yeah? If I don't call apply, it will never update the model. So I will call dollar scope dot dollar apply. Yeah? And now I have to say what I want to imply. And I want to imply exactly the spin rotor function. Okay. This one line now calls the spin rotor function and then will update the drawn model. This is the function of this. This is what it's doing. Yeah? Why we wrote this in a separate function? Well, it's nice if we are sure that those application parameters are there. However, if we want to be this a little bit more rigid, this program. Yeah? What if somebody is deleting this scope app params app angle? Yeah? What if? Yeah? I can check this. If not, this here, this application parameter, if this is not existing, this will bring back true. Yeah? And I will set this to zero. Yeah? This one line now makes sure that this application parameter angle is there. Because if it is not there, yeah, it will set it simply to zero. Okay? Also, this wind We also have to check. If there's nothing in wind, we set the wind to a certain value. Yeah? And to make it to make it a little bit configurable, I will add a, a variable yeah, called angle increment. And this I'll set to one. Yeah? So we'll set this to angle increment. Now we have selected, because now what I actually can do is I can remove these values here. Yeah? Now they are not there. Yeah? And whenever this function is called, it will be initially set to zero in angle increment. And this is the reason behind these two lines. Okay.
now we have to to somehow start the wind okay so we'll add a new function dollar where's the dollar there ah scope dot <laughs> and I will call it function start wind function and we'll start with the function yeah? and there will also there will also be a function called stop wind yeah? and now what we actually do is uh, we make a new variable time id this we need yeah. and the timer id shall be and now we're calling a timer okay now we're applying a timer it is done with set interval and this set interval we have to tell the function we want to use we want to use this function yeah. And we have to, to tell how many milliseconds. Yeah. Simply write 50. Every 50 milliseconds, this shall be done. Okay? That's it. And here in stop wind, I can say clear interval. Yeah. Time it. So here I set the timer. Now this timer function, after this function, this timer spin function is called every 50 milliseconds. After this function, we have cleared the interval and it will stop. What I really don't like is what if I call this clear interval with minus one. So if I before call the stop wind. So also the other way around, what if I call the set interval if there is already a timer running? So I will simply write if time it is bigger than minus one. So if there is already a timer running, yeah, because time ids are always zero or are greater, yeah, I will simply also here clear interval. This is actually the most the most dangerous part. If I start the timer and start the timer and start the timer, every time I start and then poo, there are a lot of timers running. So if there is already a timer running, I will also stop it in start wind. This is a safe variant. And here I will indicate that the timer is no longer running. And that's it. Yeah. Every time I call now the function start wind, yeah, this shell turn. Every time I call this function stop wind, this shall stop. Okay. Now, how to check this? Yeah? We will now set it to 100% again. Yeah? Now, in 2D, yeah? in 2D, I will enter a new toggle switch yeah? toggle switch i will call it wind yeah? i will do a new studio d toggle wind uh, back this is my toggle button yeah? here i can call something to click yeah if it's clicked i can call a javascript here which JavaScript shall I call now? Shall I call the one who is starting or is stopping? Yeah. This is a little bit tricky. So I need another function. This function is called toggle wind. Yeah. I call a function called toggle wind. Yeah. Turn off, turn off, turn off, turn on, depending on the status here, on this value. Depending on the value, I want to turn off and turn off turn on and turn off the wind. Yeah? So we have to also enter a new function here. New function dollar scope dot 
f toggle wind yeah, equals function brackets back yeah, toggle wind how how yeah? we have to know the value of this of this toggle button here yeah? we have to toggle the value to, to, to know the value of this toggle button this value we want to know if it's checked yeah, or not yeah? if it's one or zero if it's true or false yeah? how do we access a special widget yeah? this is a widget yeah? how do we access this in javascript we also have can have a look in the scope i can write if if is if statement yeah and then in i said scope is the beginning of everything dollar scope yeah then in the structure it's the view so it's the actual view we are doing yeah this windmill view yeah? done vdg for widget yeah and then the widget name and this was called toggle wind now i'm already in the widget yeah? and now i am accessing the value This shall be the value of the widget. And if this is true, yeah, I'm calling dollar scope dot f start wind and else I'm calling stop wind. Zoom in again, this I entered now, toggle wind, if dollar scope view widget toggle wind value is true, I call start wind, else I call stop wind. Now let's see if this is working or if I made as usual somewhere a typo. Press the button. <laughs> it's moving. Yeah? It's moving, it's rotating. Is this still working? Yes. Can I stop it? Can I stop it? Yeah, baby, this is what I'm talking about. This now looks nice, huh? I can start the wind, I can move this, everything else, I can also look around. Huh? Isn't that nice? Huh? Isn't that nice? Huh? Stop the wind. Start the wind. Nice. Huh? So these are the lines which are necessary to do this. Huh? You see? It's not that complicated. So what we can do? Huh? Maybe. Huh? Under information, yeah, you can add a picture here also. Yeah? I will add this one. Yeah? Open here. Yeah? What does it mean? Save here under my projects now. This picture can be seen. Okay, so this is a picture you can display that you know that you can dis distinguish between your projects yeah? that it does not look. So rudimentary, so low deck in comparison. Open windmill. Yeah. Okay, so now we can publish our project. Huh? Now we can publish our project. I will press publish. Yeah. I again have to enter the username and the password. Yeah. Username. Password uploaded ready. 
project published. Okay. Now we try it again with our handheld device and see if this is also working. Let's see if this is working here with my picture again. Okay, so I already started the Vuforia View app. I will scan again the according thing mark, which is associated with my project. Yeah, I select this project, yeah, and now it shall be downloaded or shall be presented, hopefully. Yeah, yeah so I want to select this, please. It's loaded. Yeah. Okay. Now it shall recognize. There it is. There it is. Yeah. This is working, hopefully, still. Yes, this is working. And now, oops, fingers in front of the camera. Yeah, boy. <laughs> it's spinning. You see? It is working. It is working. Ooh. Spin it. Turn off. Yeah, boy. Is this still moving? Yes. <laughs> yes, it is. As always. Nicey, dicey. You see? Automatic. Automatic animation. Yeah. Maybe we could do another slider changing the wind factor yeah, that we can move it faster or slower. Yeah. And maybe we can also add uh, the slider, the visibility of the slider, only when the wind is turned on. Uh, this would be nice. Uh, then we can make it a little bit faster because this really looks like how I would do it. Uh, small, slow, but steady, <laughs> like a freight train. Okay, yeah, so this is automatic animation. It's automatic animation. 2D devices, well, we have covered them now. Next topic we're going to do is we will use the Microsoft HoloLens. Yeah? We will use a 3D eyewear project. Then we see we have other type of issues there. A lot of things work very similar. However, the big difference, we don't have a touch. We don't have a surface here. We cannot add sliders like here. Yeah? Cannot, because there is, no, there is no surface. I cannot touch anything. There is no slider. How this is working? Yeah? We are going to learn in next video. For this time, thank you very much for listening. Goodbye.